in a world deep inside the mind of Clark comes to you the first episode ever outdoors. It's Victoria Day here. We're yeah. recording in my backyard on Victoria Day. So it's happy a- Victoria Day in 2022 because it's already too late for you now by the time you hear this. So Blue skies. We have yeah. some some sounds around us we since it's a long weekend here so it's a holiday monday here yeah. in canada we do have some potential distractions that may but come in and out we yeah. have lawnmowers leaf blowers birds birds also lots of them i hope that it's not too distracting well, i think it's flavor flavor text as it would be called if uh this gives some ins if you happen to be listening to, to this in tuck to yuck tuck right now and all you can hear are the growls of polar bears outside of your door scratching, <laughs> wanting to get in and devour you because they haven't had food recently. Well, this is what a summer day, well, not summer, spring day in Canada. Well, in uh, Ontario, southern in, Ontario. In, 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 yes, we'll Canada. keep getting more specific. Ontario. Toronto, Toronto just Toronto, outside of Toronto. Guildwood. And then I won't mention the the road because neither Clark nor I want our uh, fans our fan to base come to be coming in staring on in the windows. Door. But uh, you could probably find us. You just probably show up in Guildwood and start saying, "Who are the two most irritating people in this neighborhood?" And they're probably <laughs> going to point us out. So anyway, uh, in Guildwood, which is a very nice neighborhood, I actually live in this neighborhood because of Clark. Uh, when he had his second child, I came here to visit uh, and see their. Uh, when she, well, if Clark will beep that out if he doesn't want that, and if you hear to beep, he doesn't want. Yeah, we don't know. have children or any innocent. We're protecting the innocent. Oh, I see, especially those under eighteen. So that 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 beep is the name of a child. Okay. And uh, the point was, I came to see that, and when I visited here, uh, I really enjoyed the place. Looked for a, a rental, and before you knew it, I owned a home less than three days later. So. It was very serendipitous. Everything came together like the universe often does. You try and plan things, they don't work, but you just let go and re- release any expectation or judgment. And often things just flow into your life without even so much as uh, any effort on your part. It's quite incredible, actually, that that happens. And when you look around here, God, it was a, like, I couldn't have designed this. It's, it's, it's such a beautiful neighborhood. I really enjoy it. Lots of big trees, mature trees. Yeah. It's very quiet, other than when there's leaf blowers and lawnmowers going. Yeah. But. But, I mean, if you're local to this area, and I, whoever you are listening, and wherever whatever noise commonly is around you, only the visitors will notice those noises. You yourself probably don't. We used to, Clark and I used to live very close to train tracks when we were younger um, in Pickering. And the GO train was such a regular noise. Of course, the GO train is the government of Ontario, government of Ontario train. So that train, which was on a very regular schedule, would go by. And when you get in there, people are like, oh, God, I don't know how you do it Mm -hmm. listening to that train going by. You're like, well, I don't even notice it anymore. So much so that when I finally moved away in grade 10 for me. um, You missed it. I felt like I had lost something. And Mm. left something behind at the house. For months, I was like, what did I leave behind? There was this... You couldn't figure it out initially. Couldn't figure it out, Clark. And then eventually, clicked in. It was the train noise I was missing. That's interesting. Most people talk about sounds, or sorry, about smell being such a nostalgic thing. Now, this isn't necessarily nostalgic, though, I guess. It's more... It is, though, because... Like, if you hear the train go by, do you think of childhood? Absolutely. If I was in the same area and heard the I same do, type of train, let me get. Okay, we have to. Okay. We have to try to give ourselves some space. Yeah, okay, but uh, I'll answer your question when you finish. Remember, it, I'm ahead. the host, so when no. I speak, you have Sorry. to stop. My, my apologies, Mr. Host. Uh, I'm the mirror. I'm. The, You're I'm, still I, in I, audition. I, I, I'm a pleb. You're still auditioning. <laughs> sure. These are auditions. I, I've accepted nothing yet, so no, I, I may be auditioning, but y- you you can't afford my rate. So. Well, that's why you volunteer. That's right, exactly. Okay. So, um, ask your question then well, about trains. Trains and missing. Have I missed trains? Well, Lots. I'm I'm saying that smell is often a nostalgic. I think they say that's one of the strongest nostalgic triggers. I guess is the right. sm- the, the a smell. Okay. Um. You know what? The, like. I'll, I'll, I have a the smell of vanilla perfume 
makes mm-hmm. me think of a girlfriend I had named Tracy mm-hmm. because she always wore vanilla perfume. Yeah. And it just reminds me of being 21 or whatever I was and her. Right. And it's just, a, it wouldn't matter who was wearing that perfume. I would think of her. And it's funny, right as soon as you mentioned ex-girlfriends, that's My wife where your shows wife up. shows up and starts acknowledge, like put. Uh, She's showing us banana bread that she baked for us. And here we are talking about my yeah. ex-girlfriend. You, and she you, can't hear us. You can. Can you open the door? Open the door. Hi. We were just talking about you, okay, actually. I saw that. Did you want some? Uh, you don't want any. So, listeners, uh, what you have here? Well, when I uh, said, the, you're, the, you're passing me the loaf, like I'm supposed to like the, take a bite we're, off we're, of it. I want you to smell. Who's coming out from inside? We're filming outside. Of it course, smells filming. great. We're not filming. The we are recording. Uh, has made first and names, Mike. No eight, first names. She's old, she's over eighteen. No, in general, I like to print Okay, right. so you've heard three or four beeps now because Mike keeps saying names. Well, there's beep has just showed up and she's got some <laughs> banana bread in her hand. And it some? looks delicious. I'd love so, a slice, um, yes. How long did it take you to make that beep? <laughs> <laughs> it took about 10 minutes. It looks wonderful. Plus and it cooking. smelled wonderful. Mike can't eat it because Mike is Absolutely. sensitive to wheat. I don't know that I'm allergic, but my body doesn't react to it well. So uh, I've stopped. But it does some? look delicious. Yes, please. I'd love some. All right. And that little message brought to you by Banana Bread Makers. We don't use last names either. Uh, okay. So beep Banana Bread Makers. <laughs> okay. Where are, are we going rules, today? Because we I'll are... just point out to the listeners. Mike... Pointing out, uh, yeah, go ahead, in, go ahead. in a metaphorical way, because you, you, you can't see my finger while I point when you're listening. So I'll I'll point with a, a, a an auditory example that way. And what I'm what I just verbally pointed at there it was that when we show up, the process of what we do here is still being understood by the guests. Clark has an idea, but being that this show. This, this episode, don't dare say podcast, but if this episode of this podcast is in, in the... Uh, Did you listen to that episode? I, I gleaned a little bit okay. of it, yes. So uh, if this episode a, was it is, is, a pet is part peeve of, of mine. the evolution of this show, one of those things that's still evolving is the guest's understanding of what the rules are. Because we do not get a document beforehand or coached in the green room that here are the rules that you will abide by when you enter the Clark show, or as this particular show is called, we talked about this, which makes me just as equal a member of it at any point because it doesn't say the Clark show, which he's reminding you I that say it Clark is. and friends. Right. And we're not allowed to say last names. So all you're hearing, viewers, is the Clark or the Clark eh. yeah, so there you go That's there's right. going to be a lot of beeping over my talking there and is. that always will be the case it's a wild card when we have you on the show it can be this, by the way, this is the first time you and I have done our an episode it, together. It doesn't just seem like that's the case, hmm. but I guess it could be because Clark and I have done like unrecorded podcasts episodes our entire life. Notice how I got the episode in there, uh, our entire life. So while this may be the first recorded episode of we talked about this episode fifty four. Like Club fifty four, car fifty four. There's a lot of fifty four has a lot of significance in the world. Um I'm not yet fifty four, but I'm getting there. Um No, you just turned fifty. Yeah. And turned, we just did our fiftieth episode. And I turned fifty in the middle of COVID and there was nobody to celebrate with me. I was all by my home by, all at home by myself crying. No, I was actually not cry I never have looked uh, historically, at birthdays is a huge thing. Yeah, but I sort of changed on that a little bit. At it's, fifty, you think fifty is like this milestone? Well, that it was a little different. There than is other a birthdays. milestone to fifty, which is this: given the average human lifespan to the exceptional, meaning, wow, that person had a good, healthy life. Let's say is a hundred. I'm at the peak of a summit. A uh, peak of a summit. That's redundant. I'm at the <laughs> summit of a hill, mountain, or. Uh, whatever you want to call it. And so I can see more clearly at this point in my life, what is behind me and what's to come than technically any other moment. If we're talking about the visual and this episode is brought to you by the word senses. We have five that we know of. Do we have more? And which of those senses are really important to us? So that is going to be, no matter what Clark and I talk about, 
I'm going to draw it back to senses, sensory perception, because it's the only way we can know this world. It's the only way I know Clark is here, that I'm here. I hear him. I see him. I smell the banana bread. I can taste uh, the remnants of my uh, sl- slurpy, what, not slurpy. What smoothie. Is smoothie. It's like it, a blueberry it was a smoothie. Slurpy smoothie, that was for sure. Um, I can taste just on the edge of my the periphery of my taste i can taste grass because people are cutting it so mm-hmm. literal probably small little bits of grass and pollen are coming into my mouth um as we speak so do we have topics today I, we're sort of morphing between lots of this is like micro dosing we're micro dosing on topics instead of doing a whole meaty all you can eat rib fest of and just of like baby back ribs the, and the topic being like shoelaces and all we're going to do is talk about shoelaces for an hour. I propose we microdose on topics. One thing I will comment on, since we're doing this show sitting at the same table together, it feels very different than the Zoom right. situation because in what ways? I feel well. I feel a lot more relaxed. Me too. I I did mention to you one time that the things that are missing from a Zoom podcast are the ability to. And I've noticed a few things since then, but the ability to, this is an, I'm going to tie this back to sense sensory perception in a second. Now, of course, right now, as I'm talking, there's some wind going by, which my ear doesn't hear, but I bet you the wind is picked up by this microphone. And once again, there's sensory perception. Clark and I don't hear all the birds in the background. We don't, even if we had our headphones off, we would not hear it because it's such a background noise to us. Our brain says, okay, accept that, accept that as a constant in this area. The noises of lawnmowers, uh, birds, of people walking by with dogs, of dogs barking at each other, of car horns, of motorcycles, of toilets flushing. All of these things are perceptible. Outdoor, there's not many outdoor toilets. Doesn't here. matter. You can hear them. Trust me. You Coming can, out of someone's if, bathroom. If we are. How how far do you think that window is away from us? This is the neighbor's window you're speaking yeah, of. Yes. So we, um, it, ten feet, fifteen feet. So yeah, let's 10, say 15, let's yeah. say ten, five feet past that is a washroom, and because he's inside alone, he decides I'm just going to keep the door open, take the leak, flush the toilet. If you were able to immediately mute. Every noise around us, except for that one, you would hear it as clear as day, I guarantee it. And why I know that, once again, coming back to film, is that we have such a controlled environment on film sets. When a scene is happening, everything is as quiet as can be, except for what the action is, because they want to try and capture each individual sound as cleanly as possible. They have, uh, they have someone with a shotgun mic. Sometimes they have personal microphones on actors. Mm-hmm. They have planted mics around to get ambient sound. And then there's a mixer who is capturing and adjusting levels in real time as it's happening. Right? So these are all... And, that, and, and of course, they're monitoring all the noises that are going to intrude upon the sound that they're trying to capture. So if it's dialogue... They don't want to hear a hum from a light. They don't want to hear some fan in the background or someone playing some little video game at what they perceive as barely audible, even though it's 200 meters away. So you may not consciously hear it, but you would note its absence. And you wonder, what do I mean by that? If you were trying to recreate the sound of this backyard, in a uh, in a controlled setting, and basically make a reproduction. If they added everything that we can hear right now that you can recognize, yet didn't add any of the noises below your level of perception, played back for you, I would propose that you would say that's very close, but there's something missing. And if they said, "What about now?" you'd hear it and say, "Wow." That's it. And they'd say, you'd go, what's the difference there? I can't detect a difference. And they say, well, in that one, we had sinks, toilets, 
and they'd give you all the sounds that were below the threshold of automatic understanding, but that they're by their absence that you would detect them. Well, that's interesting because, you know, th- there, w- there could be sounds that are, and you're maybe sort of saying this already, but there could be sounds that are introduced that somebody plays, okay, this is your backyard, yes. and then all I hear are birds. Yeah. I would be thinking, I might not necessarily think of my backyard as a place where there are lots of birds. Right. But that became conscious to, right to me on a conference call I had yeah. where I was outside, and somebody said, where are you? I said, I'm in my backyard. And he said, wow, the birds. You're, and from that moment on, I now, I now pay attention to the bird sounds. It literally sounds like we're in a marsh almost yeah. around here. It, it, and we could be. But to your point, there are there right sounds now. someone might play for me to say, this is your background, and I might not even r- recognize it because right. I maybe I, I'm so, um, I hear it all the time. Yeah, it, it, like for example, if you had a client or a, uh, someone that you're working with, if, if Clark works for a, um, have you discussed all those things yet? Do your listeners know? A financial services company. Right. And that financial services company is apt to have both clients and And I'm eating this banana stations. bread, which I know is very rude to be doing. It's not rude to me, uh, other than the fact that he no, can't share No, but for the any, listener to hear yeah, it. it's rude to the listener. It's not rude to me at all, even though I can't share in any with him. I just have to watch him eat it and just pretend that I could eat banana bread. Oh, yeah, I should have asked. That would have been the polite thing to do, I guess, would have been to say, well, Mike, I know you can't eat this. Would yes, you be okay if okay. I ate this in front of Clark you? Clark and I have a history together that is we're beyond We just ignore all politenesses. things like that. Yeah. Yes, like, you know, like Monty Python, I fart in your general direction kind of thing. It's <laughs> acceptable. Although, you know, that one, if, if that got beeped, then we know what kind of censorship this this chat has. Oh, I was just thinking I might call the episode that. What, censorship episode? Oh, I fart in your general direction. <laughs> you could do that. And actually, you could just say, you know, oh, the... This episode comes with a warning. Mike Morosky being a guest is, uh, with some viewers may, some viewers and listeners may be offended and viewer discretion is advised. Uh, now, of course, it would be listener discretion is advised. Because That's right. Unless you're going to stare at the, uh, you could actually watch this episode, by the way. There is a way. And that way is you could watch the waveform of the sound. So, um, that, uh, Sound has a waveform. In fact, all energy in the universe, which is everything, is a wavelength. So, when you're talking about um, sound, this blew my mind when I was a kid and I realized this. They say analog, right? Analog records. And I was like, yeah, man, analog. Well, what, is, what does that mean? And then you're like, yeah, what does that mean? Well, when the disc which has no information on it is when you cut a record let's cut it you're literally cutting the surface with a little blade Mm -hmm. and just like your ear has something called the tympanic membrane that fluctuates it beats and creates a pulse that is then interpreted almost did like digital into into uh impulses that your brain detects and interprets sound itself does not have a sound sound is transformed electrically into something your brain hears. So that old story about if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear, does it make a sound? Well, no, it does not. It actually has to be interpreted by a brain to be sound. Otherwise, it's a waveform. And hmm. that energy has to be translated. I don't think I've ever heard that take on that well, before. Well, that is my take on it. And I, maybe, I, I want someone who knows what they're talking about to say, Mike, you don't know what the F you're talking about, buddy. But that's the way I've always thought of it. So, anyway, back to the record. You cut a record because this little knife skips up and down. What about back to the podcast? Well, this is part of the podcast. I mean, we can pick the needle off off this track to keep the record uh, uh, metaphors going and get to a new track. But I can finish this in two seconds. You cut the record by the, the, the membrane bouncing up and down at the same speed as the beat of the waveform. And it makes a shape up and down. The amplitude follows analogous to the waveform. And so even though it's in a circle, that just saves space. You could technically have a record that was a straight line. It doesn't have to rotate. You could have something that gets fed through and that waveform would go up and down and then retranslate then pass back that vibration back into the record. 
player or the disc player or the long strip of plastic player. There's different shapes. It's just that record saves uh, time and space. Um, like imagine pulling something out of your closet that was 203 feet long to feed it through. You know, it wouldn't be very efficient to store those. But uh, with a record, if you were to stretch it out and look at it from the side, not top down, but if you were to able to stretch out the track and look at it from the side, you would see that the shape up and down would fit analogous, analog, which is the same as analogous to the waveform. It's exactly the same shape. And this is why some people prefer the sound of records to CDs, because the waveform, if you look at it, has it's smooth. Whereas as soon as you digitize something, it depends on the resolution of that digital copy. There's information technically missing. We won't get into that, but anyway, it's oh, just we're already just, into it. But... I know we're not getting deeper into okay. it. Is what I mean, unless All you right. want to. Okay, here's so normally in this show, yeah, I have segments and I introduce them and then we get into it but I think we're kind of going all over the place which well, this is I don't, the microdosing episode right I don't mind this because there you go there's Mike that, there's that wind again micro dosing do you would you twinge if you heard micro oh don't get me wrong trigger and twinge twinge is the wrong word I mean would it perk make you perk up Tr no although it would probably be like this huh? oh yeah, That's, this, Mike this is the, the conscious part of me would go yeah well like, oh, what was that? Oh, oh, okay, it's not me. I get that with my name sometimes. Because as soon as I hear Mike, it would go, hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. Replay that. Mike Rowe, do Ah, oh, it's not me. Okay. That's well, what would be said in a 16th of a second, my brain would make that nonverbal, non-language assessment. And that's probably nothing unusual, and whether your name's Mike again. or it's Clark, because I get names like Barb always got my eye. Why? Or my ear. Is that because you liked a barb? I, I knew you did at one time. I so did. So when you hear that, do you perk yourself up because you think it might be that barb? No, because it's the same, it rhymes with Clark. It's the R, R, Clark, 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 Barb, Clark. Clark, Clark, Clark. Barb. That's why it mostly barb. resonated. Clark. Um, okay, since we're not really doing official segment intros, I, yeah. I want to just, I do want to go into this question do right it. now. Do it. Which is... If you did have to lose one of your five senses, which one would it be? Have to. There's two ways of looking at that, which is I get to choose. Someone holds a gun to my head and says, you either lose one sense right now, your choice, or you lose all of them. Which is it going to be, Morosky? Oh, sorry. No last names. Which is it going to be? <laughs> um, have you thought about this what question do you know before? Last names. You've, I'm, my name is introduced, uh, and it's they know who I am. But you've said it. Yeah, I know. Uh, but I didn't did, say it. Hold on. Did, You're allowed to use your own last name. Okay, fine. Moroski, 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 Moroski. Um, but don't you? Int is, does okay? Someone who has been on previous episodes, it'll be no surprise to hear his name. Paul has Paul ever said his last name? I think so. Okay, but when you introduce them on the the podcast uh, homepage. It's always just the first name. Okay. Well, then... Except for Ed, who loves to have everybody know the, who he, he loves is. the ring of his Hello, last name. Hello, my name is Ed Carrick, and I, I was Ed, the Ed, communications Ed. officer for the... Exactly. So his job, it's like a cutter cuts, a, 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 a tailor... Tails? <laughs> what do they do? <laughs> a cutter cuts, a surgeon cuts, a craftsman hammers and... People what, do what their job is. So Ed, being a communications director, his job was to communicate. Right. And so what he did he do? He introduced himself by full name. Okay, can we go which, back to the question? Yes, we can. So which which sense you you do? In this case, there's a gun to your head. Yep. And you must give up one of your five senses. Which one is it? Jeez. Is that you snapping? Yeah, it is. I'm making. <laughs> it's a nervous tick. I'm slept. Okay. As so, I as I want to take away one up, of your senses. That noise right yeah. there is me flicking. Okay, there's that's so annoying things. to not just me, but to the listener. It is annoying unless they're... L listen, there's this I can't episode. edit that out because you're you talking can. while you're making the noise. Yeah, I don't want it to be edited out. Well, I'm going to talk about but it. I don't want to just... But you I don't want to have question. someone's tweeter pinge no, but, out on the but, front right side no, of their car. No, but listen. Okay. Now, this is a Sharpie in my hand. And unconsciously, I was taking the little nib that you sort of... the um, It's the little clip. The clip part that goes in your pocket. I was just pulling it back 
and letting it. If flick. I hadn't mentioned so, it, you would have kept it down by your leg no, instead true, of bringing it up I, to the microphone. This will be a future episode. I'm telling you right now. The future <laughs> episode is this: in film, there's something called a foley artist. And what a Foley artist does is they mimic sounds because, of course, they're not going to go out and actually record an imperial snow walker walking across crunchy snow. Mm. So they have to imagine what would that sound like in a convincing way that when an audience member experiences that noise, they don't say, that's not what that would sound like. It has to well, feel legitimate. And even if it was, the, I bet mm-hmm. you if you took a microphone to a, a snow walker hitting it snow, it probably sound, wouldn't even sound good. No, it wouldn't sound the same way because you're not going to capture it. Right. The way huh. it's expecting you, for example, gunshots do not sound like they sound right. in Raiders of the Lost They Ark. sound like firecrackers. <laughs> Which is so... Or any movie with a gunshot. Here, Okay, Raiders of the Lost Ark is my favorite movie. And uh, w- when it taken when taken cinema and movies as a totality, there are, to be more specific, different reasons why one movie is above another. If I said, what's your favorite sports movie? Well, Raiders of the Lost Ark doesn't qualify, so it wouldn't be the f- favorite. But if you take every film that exists and says, you can only keep one, Raiders of the Lost Ark is my choice. And... I don't want those gunshots to sound like real gunshots. I want them to sound like these howitzer cannons that Indy has control. He wouldn't even be able to hold the gun with one hand if it's the sound represented the action mm-hmm. coming out of that gun. So, yes, it's understood. These are fake. So in this world of sound, for this little detour, we'll end it here. This Sharpie could be the sound of something. It could be the sound of your gun blank firing yeah, it could because be an electric got, shock it could be it could be anything so a foley artist will find this and say what could this be and then he is going to take this and record it and then put it over top of a visual in a way that you don't question that it's that other thing and it's an amazing creative mind to see things like to take a head of lettuce as fresh and crisp and mm. crush it immediately or rip it and then that is like an arm being broken. Right. And so a whole episode could be done on that easily. I love that stuff. It fascinated me so much. Right from, and Clark probably remembers, the making of Star Wars when Ben Burt was sitting out there with his little re- side recorder on his hip hitting with a piece of metal and his and his microphone the high tension, the wires that were the high tension wires that would hold up electrical towers. And by striking them they would create the right frequency pew, that mm-hmm. would travel down the line. And that was used as the sound for laser blasts. Yeah. Like as the, as the, the, the core for it. Anyway, that's just that. You know, it's, when I was a kid, I used to go around hitting those cables on hydro poles. Yeah. This is the it, second episode. We, I, we talked I never about this got nostalgia. it. So uh, I never quite got it. And that's I said, be, no, that's bullshit. That's because you were, no, it trust, it's, but it's, it's all it's about there. the tension. It's, it's the, the tension. length of it's the like, it's thing. Basically it's a big guitar. We got to go back to the main so thing. The, the, the topic what of what sense, sense would I eliminate? Would you give away? So Your I wouldn't get is, rid of sound. There's no way sound is too important yeah. in this world. In fact, I'm all, I'm even questioning whether sound would be the very last one I'd keep. Meaning like I would keep sound over, Sight, sight, I yeah. think. Because sight, I think, naturally is the one everybody would think. There's no way I could give that up. I honestly don't know. Yeah. Remember, if you have one kick at this can called life. Now, good, granted, we're not saying take away all but one. We're saying... Just lose one. you got to lose one. So you've ruled out sound for sure. I think I would Because it may be your number one sense that you're... From I what couldn't I'm hearing. lose touch. Touch is my dominant sense. Okay. So I believe that uh, when you meet someone... Of the five senses that we most strongly identify with and are acknowledged through scientific observation, uh, I believe that people have a dominant sense, or maybe a dominant and a subdominant. Meaning, like you meet someone, and you—if you, it's a good way to interact with them—if you know someone is visually dominant, they have no interest in how, uh, or less—I should say less. You, if you are trying to date someone. Uh, and they're visually dominant, they want you to look nice, be dressed up, have your place visually clean, have a nice car, things that look interesting and look in, like well-kept and are balanced and have color and cadence and structure. They're not so interested in getting a back rub. Whereas me, uh, 
I think my dominant sense is number one, touch, followed very closely by sound. Visual would be uh, probably be fourth, actually. I think my third one would be smell, then taste, and then finally visual. Now, they are so close. That is not to say that one is thousand miles ahead of the other one. It just means that going straight down, I think for practical purposes, the one I would lose would be taste. Yeah. Tell you the truth. That's the one I would lose. It would Which suck. Sucks. Yeah. It sucks so much because all our senses are so incredible. But think of it this way, folks. If there's a sixth sense that you don't have, once you become used to having it, how much would it suck not to have it anymore? So, for example, the sixth sense might be able to read someone else's mind or mm. look into the future or understand the vibrations of under uh, undersea uh sponge uh, migrations or something like that. And then all of a sudden you don't have that sense anymore. Well, here's, how about the upside of not having taste? You would probably eat less. Yeah, you would eat for sustenance. How much do you eat because of how it tastes? Uh, Easily, easily. More than 50%. No, well, that's, it's hard to say. I don't think you can extricate that. Uh, In my life, food taste is as important as what it does, but it's not the only th- characteristic. So what I'm saying by that is this. When I select food, it must meet certain criteria for me to eat. This has not, by the way, this has not always been the case. So if someone's listening going, well, that that's an effing lie, Morosky, because I've seen you at China Buffet King with 14 plates of food and three plates of dessert. You're right. I was a, I was a, I was a pig. And I could, it was a human garburator. I could, geez, I, I would eat. You would Chef eat other Boyardee. people's plates of I would food. Eat other, yeah, you would I, say, I are would, you done no, with Clark, that? Clark and then knows. you would pass it over. Like, Mike, it's a buffet. You can just go up there. Yes. Yeah, well, that and like Clark, when we go for chicken wings, I oh, lose. Oh, gosh. I lose. Because if we get a plate of wings for the table, I'm still polishing off wing number one. While yeah. people like, say, Peter is on wing number seven. Because Peter eats chicken wings like a cobs of corn he just goes to the middle and grabs all the meat and then throws this like 50 percent meat full chock full of meat around the edges throws it on the thing like done and i'm like peep what are you doing he i mean peter if he's listening or if you anybody knows who this guy is peter's a regular listener so peter has weird proclivities when it comes to food and smell like milk in a glass is an issue with him one day i'm gonna take a glass a really nice glass and like use some uh, steel wool and sh- scratch the crap out of the inside of well, it well he claims pr- that drinking it. milk out of a glass is, it smells it, strange and then i think you were the one that made up the fact that if there's scratches in the glass it smells worse or did he actually say that well, no, I think he and i identified did you just drink that bottle right out i did Isn't this, this is whole a thing for me no, this is that's a soda stream bottle. So, so that that isn't for personal consumption. Okay, so it's to be poured into a glass. Uh, see, I don't know that. Did uh, you know that I caught Ed? He used to have a soda. Well, he does have a soda stream. Yeah, what does he do with it? He just he used to just like drink right out of the soda stream bottle, but put it back in the fridge, and for then other he would use? put water back in. But you you attach it to a a, a thing that cranks carbon uh, dioxide see, okay. into it. So that's like the main. Okay. bottle of which you just drank straight <laughs> yes, I out did. of it i did because at home i use um uh what's it called esca is the my p- bottled water uh bottle of choice and i almost 97 percent of the time drink straight from the bottle i drink six liters a day probably maybe more and uh, when I'm finished drinking from that bottle i crush it down and put it into recycling now, please, if you are uh, environmentally conscious, give me some feedback on what a terrible person I am for drinking and throwing all that plastic in a landfill. I'd love to debate you Well, on this that. is partly what I... We have this to, so it avoids that. Okay. So, how do you clean these bottles? We take... Uh, like, because we don't drink from the bottle itself, we okay. probably wash it maybe once a week. I see. So, now that is not... This will be... Now I have to wash that bottle all like right. when we bring it back So, inside. now that I've touched it once... I won't continue to just to make my point 
I understand that, but it will now rec- recognize that it need be washed now because I've yes, put it to my mouth. It will be. Uh, the tests that Thoroughly. I most recently have uh, reveal that I have no, I have no hepatitis A or B. So okay. you're good there. Uh, as right. far as any other communicable diseases through the orifice I call my mouth, I'm not sure. You'll have to figure that out. <laughs> okay, watch it. We got to get back to the topic. So, uh, well, so taste, have you have you finished taste. with it? So taste is the one you'd give up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I don't want to because the world that you'd leave behind with giving up taste would be such a loss. Okay, I'm a, I'm in agreement. I would pick the same one. All right, guns back to the head. You get to keep one. Uh. I would ask is it sound I or ask, touch? As you said earlier, touch was really important. So is it keep touch? I mean, then you're just this being that sits so there and the, feels things. Yeah, I know. I really that would sort of suck in a lot of ways. Well, see, if you chose, look at Helen Keller and the Miracle Worker. If I said, I only want hearing, people could communicate with me and then I could learn visually I could make noises. I could move, yeah. right? I can't feel me moving, but I could move and say, see these fingers? Maybe I could learn how to do sign language or some other form. And so it has to be this. What is it that I want to be able to perceive for the rest of my life if it were just one thing? And I've got seconds. It depends how long I have. I'm this assuming is a that's painful for, what, topic, yes, isn't if, it? If someone puts a gun to your head... What, how long do they give me to think of an answer? If they said, think of it right now without any you got 10 seconds. Then I choose, 10, I choose sight. Nine. Because that's the one that we think we're all scared of yeah. being in the dark without anything. Yeah. However, to suggest that someone who is blind has a horrible life, I think is not well thought out. And if you were to go to someone who was blind, Stevie Wonders of the world, the uh, Jeff Healy's, the people that we've Ray loved. Charles. Ray Charles. I mean, we're just talking about musicians in this case, but doesn't that make sense? Yeah. There are people that live in a world of sound. Mm. Why do you think they would gravitate to music? Right. Like, oh, I'm a visual artist. I do finger painting. <laughs> What's this one called? Chaos. <laughs> so, okay. Touch would be, it would suck to lose that sensation though. Well, yes, it would. Because uh, you're... It, it would actually be very dangerous. If there you are were only able that. to see and you couldn't feel, oh my God. There are people that have uh, no ability to feel pain. Yeah, which uh, sounds like an advantage, but it's it's, it's, it's not. It's a serious bad you disadvantage. Kill yourself. In fact, they all, no, they almost always die from infection because yeah. they can't perceive. Like when you and I are leaning on a stove, we go yeah, and you pull your hand or away. even a cut. Like and you, even that if it was, second if it enough. really hurt, now you could look at it, I guess, and see that it's right because your body's trying to tell you something yeah. with that throbbing, that all that pain, right? Okay. Now, well, blind people, by the way, perceive light because. They have two different perceptive, uh, they have their eye, but the skin has a detector on it that was recently discovered. I think if I remember correctly, this is in the Bill Bryson book called The Body. Um, so the listeners might want to check on that. But if I remember correctly, that they said that someone who is blind can perceive light. And they did a test. They, were, they said, this doesn't make any sense. But they said, okay, we're going to shine a, a light at you. We want you to tell us, Mrs. Blind Woman, or Miss Blind Woman, or Person Blind Woman. Sorry, I haven't... I apologize to any triggered listeners about my pronouns. I have not yet studied on how I'm supposed to identify the sexes, but I'll get on to that. It's important. I'm not being sarcastic, by the way, even though it sounds like I am. I am not. I would like to actually represent and be representative of all people's ways of identifying themselves. And to identify yourself sexually is a way that you can choose to identify yourself, but it's not the only way. You could be a redhead too, and God help you if you are. But if you want to identify yourself as being a redhead... Why is that a bad thing? I don't know. It's the South Park redheads, oh, ginger kids. Cause it's It was one of the funniest episodes... <laughs> That South Park had. You ginger kids, they make us sick. <laughs> Our stomachs. <laughs> oh, gross. Cartman is like the best character. Um, <laughs> ginger kids. Okay. They have no souls. <laughs> it's just, God, that that show just continually r- makes me roll with and uh, constantly surprising that they keep it fresh. Uh, but they do. 
Um, I was just thinking the to- the other topic I was. So are we done with the sight, sound, smell? What senses are you going to lose? Whatever you want to be. It's as, I mean, I think it's we as are. deep as you want to go, really. And but, I think uh, it's. A, I think people are. This is an uncomfortable topic. It could be. The idea we bond so much with our senses that we rely we rely on them so much. What do you autom- Well, okay. Maybe this is the question before we leave it. What is it that you're afraid of? But that will that will become that will actualize when you lose that sense that you've come to depend on. Well, I was going to say what on that note. What what are you afraid of that if you got rid of that sense, it would go away? Right. You mean to to be more clear, what are you afraid would disappear from your life? No, I looked as at it more af- like as an effect of losing that sense. I don't know. I looked at it more like uh, I'm afraid of if I'm afraid of spiders, then I and I don't have to see spiders anymore. Then losing my sight would mean I don't see spiders anymore. But then uh, I would, it I would, would crawl, that, up, could crawl on me, and I wouldn't I would know argue it was there. You'll see spiders everywhere then, because then you can't even check. You would walk into rooms yeah. and go, "Okay, oh bad my example." God, spiders everywhere, because you don't know for certain they're not there. For example, how does someone? No one sees bacteria unless they're using a microscope. And yet when you look at a washroom handle, what do you see? Yeah, well, some people might see it and just think germs. Well, that's, but you, they don't see the germ, but they see it, if, if you get what I'm saying. Is that be, two-year-olds, two-year-old has no concept of my, this is, I'm not, a, I don't know this for sure. But in the evolution of a brain and conceptual understanding of the world around them, most two-year-olds do not have the have not developed the concept of contamination yet. Right. And so a bug in milk, they're like, "Ew, bug." Okay, they understand bug. Take the bug out of the milk. They drink the milk like there was no bug in it anymore. Whereas all of a sudden you're five, they're like, "No, bug was in milk. Mm. Milk now has bug in it." Mm. No, I but, don't know. That's but 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 honey, I, I took wonder. The bug out. No, no, I don't still know, man. Bug. If if a <laughs> if a kid didn't want to drink milk because there was a bug in it, I would argue if the kid was actually not going to drink the milk because of the bug in it, he is not going to drink the milk, or she is not going to drink the milk, even if the bug is removed. I would argue that you are wrong. But an argument, if you're ar- actually using don't, the, you're not going to start that ter- no, arguably no, no. thing, are you? Uh, no, the, not you mean like the Monty Python. Uh, if I argue with you, that I have to take up a country percent. No, you don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> no, I was gonna. I was speaking about your effect uh, infatuation with the word arguably. Oh, ar- we'll get. That's another episode. I ar- thought about that arguably earlier today. Arguably is the best word to throw into any argument because everything is arguable. I disagree. I, you, you can disagree all you want. That's that's it no, proves hold my on. point by disagreeing. This this let me, let me let me okay. It's not a good argument. This is important that people understand the concept or con- context. So let's go right back to the beginning. All right. So you you have argued since as long as I can remember. I think maybe this came up when you were 15 or 16. Mm, somewhere. No, it was after that. It was with Colin. Okay, let's say you were Colin, 20. Colin C- No more stop. last names. He's an Colin innocent person. C- Colin uh, said... <laughs> Our, you know, so, someone's like, you know, he's the best running back of all time. And Colin, Collins goes, arguably, because the person qualified their comment by saying, arguably, he's the best running back of all time. And Colin said, arguably, I'm the best running back of all time. It is arguable. Is it a good argument? Is it a sound argument? No. See, I disagree with that. Well, you can disagree all you want. You're arguing, okay. and you're using Can I explain the concept why? of arguing to disagree with me, if, which is ironic, isn't it? If you say right now you're arguably the best running back of all time, sure, I would say no, it's not even arguable, because A, I won't argue that, because there's nothing to discuss. You don't even play football. And then I put my fingers up in the air with fingers pointing towards the heavens and go... Victory, because he won't even argue with me, because I say he's defeated because he doesn't even want to go against the Morosky, no. which is dumb. No, no but one's going to have an argument like that. That's it got doesn't a, matter, a, but that's, that's the point that's of arguments. Sane. So arguments are this. An argument, but I would just sit back. I wouldn't argue it. Hold on. Is this arguing it? Let, no, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to 
delve. Okay, get your arguable. Gonna, out, then we have to. I'm going to go deeper into that. All right. What is an argument? Define that. And I'm going to pull up a dictionary. I have an idea what it is. Okay. I'm going to pull up a dictionary definition of the word argument. Yeah. And I want you to define it. So, be, uh, listeners. You could here, just here, look up the definition of say. arguably, which is the word where you have... Yeah, no, that's not what I want to do, because arguably I, I, yeah, is a I modification of yeah. the word argument. Right. To argue. But what about well, just we go straight to, let's look up the word arguably and uh, see what it says. Uh, that's not... Wouldn't that be interesting? No, what if it says you, right I there, go to the root. arguably only applies in cases where there's a reasonable argument to be made? The, well, then then I will say... On it, okay, if it says that, which it will Then you'll not. stop talking about it? Yeah. Even though I brought it up. Because this is something that... I thought you would actually come to a resolution on this. God, no. No, 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 not so, even close. So now, the point is, well, here, how the point is, argu- you you think that everything is arguable? Yes, but that doesn't mean that you have a good argument. Just because you can argue it does not mean you have a valid argument. Wait, I want to go back. What's the per the the whole issue with? Is there an issue with using the word for you? No, I think it's just an incredible way to as it's a, it's the issue is that well that's not true. There is an issue when someone has a weak argument. They will often throw in the term arguably. It's like a devil's, it's like, uh, I'm the, we've talked about this in the yeah. past too. Uh, devil's, devil's advocate, advocate right? I hate that term. Well, why do you hate it? It's because the person's not just saying, listen, I want to, you know why? It, okay, let me tell you why. To stand up and yes. say, here's my position and it's counter to yours. I want to own this position Correct. rather than say, uh, well, just this to play devil's really advocate the way here. I feel, but I'm just saying. That yes. you might be wrong. Not that that's what I'm saying. Okay, why are you but using that voice? Because that's what they sound like to me when they say that. Okay. Um, when somebody says, just to play devil's advocate, I believe that they're, it's a cop-out. They're, they're not taking ownership of the statement. Right. They're, they're not putting their, what themselves on the What does the cop-out mean? What is a cop-out? Okay. Is there a cop outside and they are... Nah. Doing... Okay, come on. Well, no, no, no. This Let's... is... A, the, the, I don't this know. Is That's all not part. No, these are the. We evolution. could look it up. I don't know. I know, but these I don't are the know what it is. Of, words have meaning. That's cop, the, okay. Cop we go has right a the meaning. It's got nothing to do with police officers. Arguably, we're arguing about devil's advocate. The reason we're arguing all the reason we are arguing about all these things is because words have precise meanings. I would post it. Pause it. Pause it. Pause it. It's something in between. Something in between those two. Someone do the, it. Yeah. Someone do the research and criticize me in the comments, please. Um, I would post pose it. Pause whatever that is. God damn it! I don't remember <laughs> that. All major problems from people. Generate for all maybe are going too far. Most major problems come from misunderstanding or incomplete communications. Mm-hmm. And that is between yourself even. If you do not communicate with yourself and form a rational position, or if you take incomplete data and solidify an, an unyielding stance based on one piece of a puzzle and you think you understand the entire picture, I think that Information is scalable, both up and down, infinitely. And when someone grabs a puzzle piece and says, this is the world, if you're staring at that one puzzle piece, that's true. But that puzzle piece is but a piece of another puzzle, right? And that puzzle piece is and of itself, if you really stare at it closely, infinitely divisible as well. So if you look closely, you'll see that there are lots of missing puzzle pieces. So when someone finds a puzzle piece and lifts it up and goes, the answer to the world is uranium or whatever, unobtainium, nickel, whatever it is. And it's like, everything is about nickel. It, fine. There is truth to the fact that things are what they are, that the reality is reality. That A is A. That How did we get onto this from all, devil's advocate? And it's from, all about words have precise meaning. Okay, so fine. Things have precision and meaning, and those can change over time and morph. But when we use words, like arguably, they have a precise meaning. So you can argue that they do not have a precise meaning. 
your argument is irrelevant to the reality of that thing. You can say the sky is not blue. That doesn't change the fact that it is blue. You may not perceive it that way. It may not be blue for you, or you don't want to call it blue. All of those things are irrelevant. The world is, the world spins, it's in a place, things exist. Reality is reality. All right. And your subjective analysis of it is arbitrary. I want but to, you still have um, to communicate with people. That's why we come to terms. This is the whole point. Okay, I want to we close to this because so, we um, we, you, we you, try to keep these episodes under an hour. They don't have to be. But we'll, we'll call this part one of two then. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah, well, Can a, you read me the definition of arguably? Sure. Uh, pulling it up right now. R Q uh Which definition do you want? Dictionary.com, Oxford. Let's go Oxford. Okay. Dictionary, Cambridge, Merriam-Webster, Collins, vocabulary, free dictionary. Just so happens Oxford's number. Oh, here we are. Oxford Learners Dictionaries. Adverb. Arguably. Come on. You used. Bracket. Open bracket often before a comparative or superlative ob objective, sorry, adjective, <laughs> objective. Let's start that again. Used often before a comparative or superlative adjective, close bracket, when you are stating an opinion that you believe you could give reasons to support, he is arguably the best actor of his generation. So, note, Clark, the oh, opinion... I won the argument based on what you just opinion said. ...opinion that you believe that... So, the, the stater believes they can support it. Yeah. Everyone else but in the room can I've say... I've won the argument based on that. Because using your initial example, Colin could not reasonably argue he's the best running back of all time. Done. It's over. No. See, and... Uh, he has no statistics to prove in the NFL. That he, if He's never played the game competitively. Colin would never say that Argument. about football because he knows too much okay. about football. So you're actually, you're actually, believe it or not, Clark, you are actually showing your ignorance quite brilliantly here. And I thank him for that because it shows how lack of communication and solidity in an opinion is the problem with communication okay. worldwide. Well, I don't know if Colin specifically said It's not about Colin. I know. It's about anyone that says... I'm the, arguably the greatest yeah, running back of all time. Yeah, and if their mind time, is limited enough to think that their examples include or overrule the examples outside. Then they're from, not sane people. That's true, but that is arguable. And then someone can blow holes through their argument. No, read, that argu read what you just said there. Read that again. Opinion. What is that word? Do you want to keep going down the rabbit hole? Do you want to bring up what the definition of opinion is? No, seriously, this is how you work these things out. The, this dictionary, Oxford, says, oh, first, my opinion. Read it. No, that's not what it said. That's what only it, part of what it what said. What did it say? Read it again. I'm going to. <laughs> so, used. Often, not always. Let's go word by word. Okay. Used often before a comparative or superlative adjective. Mm-hmm. Do we want to break no, down fine. what we that means? No, we don't need means? that piece. Okay. When you, this is the speaker, the arguer, are stating, stating means putting it out there, saying it for communication purposes. It, it can be saying or writing or anything. An opinion, which is means an opinion is something the, subjective. It's the next part that's coming that's important. Oh, an opinion that you, the stater believe believe is not about certainty it's an opinion once again belief is not based in certainty this is not sigma 7 or sigma 8 certified belief is not six well six sigma is one of the sigmas there's multiple layers by the way there's sigma 6 sigma 7 sigma 8 sigma, mm. read up on no read up on sigma if you don't know okay them. fine go into your uh, Reason that you believe you could give reasons to support. Mm -hmm. Example, he is arguably the best vo voice actor of this podcast. Boom. Topics, opinion, and argument. Oxford col collocations 
dictionary. Collocations. I don't even know that word. Uh, questions about grammar and vocabulary. Okay. See, arguable. See, arguable. So anyway, the point is, yes, Colin would be making a terrible argument. It would be a terrible argument. But it's argument. not arguable. That's not... They well, still... Clark, you're confusing something but here. But it said it, they, me, they have let, to believe it. I'm going to state something, Listen, and you, then you can disagree with me. They have to believe it, though. Who? The person making the argument. I agree with you. And that person would not, in their heart of hearts, believe I agree they with were you. the best therefore, running back of all therefore, time. Therefore, Colin would not make that arguably statement. So, no, he wouldn't make... Yeah, he so, wouldn't... So he to would clarify, not, this is where I think we are dis, We are failing to meet in okay. the middle here. Yeah. I'm not saying arguably could be used um, effectively or even legitimately in all scenarios, except if the person could make that argument and it would be, require that they have a lack of understanding. Otherwise, they're not arguing, they're lying and they're trying to deceive, right? Right. Or they're trying to falsely argue. It could still be an argument, just a false one. They could be trying to lead someone down. And then just Colin, who is incredible at arguing, could crush you even knowing he's wrong. And I know he does that. He's like devil's advocate supreme. He can just take his brilliance and bury you in a false argument. So it is in. Well, argument. he wouldn't bury me if he's going to tell me he's the best running back of all time. He could convince you. It depends. Once again, context. He, he would What's have it? no what hope it? in hell of convincing what, me he was well, the best running back of all time. Okay, so then I ask you. I'd this. love to have that. To, to you comment. can do this if he was going to do that. I would say right here, you're making some assumptions. What does best mean? Of all time, mean of all time is forward and backwards. Okay, how could you even of all time as a stupid? Thing no, you this is silly. Say. People are getting annoyed listening. No, to No, I know they are. And, and and to hell with you if you are. I hate you <laughs> personally. You thinking that? Okay, oh, we ran through a number of topics today that were all over the place. Yes, um, we've definitely gone over. So, what um, what do you want to say about Victoria Day? What does it mean to you? Happy Empire Day. <laughs> See, I've never heard this Empire Day term. Well, it's. It's there. It's a real thing. Uh, Queen Victoria, it, it was, uh, the day was originally a celebration of her birthday across the British Empire, not just of Great Britain. And slowly but surely, as Queen Victoria died, and they changed the name of this um, uh, Queen Victoria Day to Empire Day to celebrate the empire, the British Empire, uh, one by one, the colonies and the Commonwealth dropped that as a national holiday. Except for Canada, we still celebrate it. And most people here call it Victoria Day or the May 2-4 weekend. So 2-4, 2-4 beer, Labac Balloon, Canadian commercials. It's totally distorted and lost its meaning over time. It's now Molson Canadian beer commercial holiday, which is the long weekend, being up at the cottage. Yay! Don't have to work. Start getting wasted and plastered. Friday night, as soon as it hits 3 o'clock, p.m. Get up to cottage country. If you have a cottage, open up your cottage, plunge into a freezing lake. And yeah, it seems the, the first summer. day of summer yeah, it's unofficially. Like the and you know what? People deserve that. They work hard. Um, no one, then we do fireworks. So anyway, uh, they, they changed it to Empire Day and now that's dis no, no one even calls it Empire Day anymore, but it is. Yeah, I, I'd never heard of that. Okay. No what are you watching, Mike, on TV right now? What's your, what's your, last, we always try to bring a, what are you watching? Last night was okay, episode hold on. 10. What are you watching, listening to, or reading? Sure. Okay, pick one uh, that you want to share. It would be a two hour extension of this episode of this podcast. If I were to tell you everything that I was both reading, watching, listening to all that stuff. So I will say that last night, the last thing I watched before going to bed was episode 10 from season one of Ozark. And it was a particularly incredible episode where a lot of different storylines and threads came together and they threw down the gauntlet. I think I know the episode. It was the... It, you can't it, say I'm it because you're not going to spoil it. It was the one that vaulted the story into the next level right. for seasons two and three. Ozark's fantastic. And I fantastic. was like, wow, what a, what a wonder... I, now that I'm starting to get the desire to write and start 
getting some of my ideas down as screenplays, uh, my mind is now focused on things differently. So I saw some of those plot points resolving this episode and I saw them 10, 15, 20 minutes before they resolved. And it's, that doesn't ruin knowing how film and television are made doesn't ruin, but it does allow you to see different things. I can see how they're built if I choose to, or I can turn those things off and watch it just as a casual viewer. So last night I was seeing it as someone who would construct a series and seeing the how little scenes they had set up in, in episodes one and three and five all paid off in the 10th episode, but also inform episodes to come in seasons two and three. It's brilliant. Just and, yeah. and the acting is such high caliber. My favorite thing about a show like, like that, and I'll end with this on that question, is a show of the caliber of Ozark it's not just the main actors who are good. You do not feel like this is a show that showcases the Jason Bateman over somebody else. Right. He has a, a concentrated main character because the story involves him from the beginning, but any character, including someone who's at a cash register, checking you Mm -hmm. out of a hunting goods store Mm -hmm. is equally believable and good because you do not question that they are a real person in a real setting. And that is a real accomplishment. And in that show, every person plays the character that they're given to a standard of believability that does not take me out of the moment. And that's very important for a show to do that. And they, they, they do it in spades on that show. Love it. Well, I watched Silence of the Lambs. Awesome show. Sorry, I'll get up. Awesome show. I really love movie. that movie. Yeah, the 1991 Silence of the Lambs, Jodie Foster, um, Anthony Hopkins. We were just trying to figure out a movie to watch uh, that we could agree on, and we picked that one. And, uh, yeah, it's it's excellent. I, I, I was saying to you yesterday, I think it does have a little bit of cheesiness here, a little bit of stuff that, you know, 90-ish cheesiness. But for the most part, like in the scene where, um, you know, the woman is down the well, uh, that it looks like a film set. Like, it puts the lotion on its skin. Like it looks like a film set. Or gets the hose again. But I wonder if part of that is, but I did ask my wife, does that look like a film set to you? Like it was the way it was painted. And I think partly my exposure to you yeah. and the, being on a couple film sets with you, I kind of maybe have an eye for it in a way now. You must, you must find that tough sometimes separating reality from when, I mean, you work in the film and movie environment. Is that hard for you sometimes to watch movies and not start dissecting the technical pieces of it? Uh, only when they're not well made. Yeah. Mm. Meaning, if the if the I have my personal opinions as to what is the hierarchy of importance in film. Uh, I would put on the top the or actually on the bottom, meaning it would be the foundational, most important quality for any movie or TV show is character. And the more you want it to engage, the more important character is. The second most important thing for me is music. The third most important thing is story and plot, which are different, by the way. Plotting and story are not the same, hmm. but uh, those are uh, syn- they're they're linked uh, inexorably together through the beginning right to the end. Uh, setting is almost as important as those because it tells story as well. Um, so if those things fail, and especially if character is, it fails to establish believable and sympathetic Did you say script? Like the words? No, not script necessarily. Because that can be in, in, in plays. Script. I've done a lot of theater. Yeah, script and, is and all I, of it though. You can't act yourself out of a bad script. No, In, you in can, theater well, anyway. You can, you can use... See, no, I, I define don't know. define bad script though. We've all read bad. No, I, I, I realize that. For me, bad is not believable. Meaning, there's a saying. In yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be you like would what you people know, really say write these what things? You know. Would they? Right. Is this exactly. how they would say? So it? if all of a sudden someone's like, we've heard it. Does right? a baseball script and it's like, hey boys, let us get, let's go out there and hit one home run for the Gipper. Let's like, what? Nobody talks like that in a dugout. But if they're all like Bull Durham came out and people were like, wow, that's refreshing. Dialogue is such an important part 
to me, like I've like go to a high school play that's written by high schoolers. Yeah. Most of the time it's, it's going to be pretty bad. It's true. Most of the time. So that's what I mean when I say, but there's, poorly there, written but there's or, goodness and badness too. Yeah. But that's, but if you took that and made a movie out of it, unless you were making a, like an a observational of, comedy, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. On how bad something can be. Like, you know, the Simpsons, that episode where he was like, and now we have a, a little piece done by your grade four class, your children. And then it's like, da, 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 da. if you remember the Bart Simpson song that came out, do the Bart man. And, okay. So, so here's what you do as the listener, get YouTube, bring up, do the Bart man. And if you do the long version Principal Skinner introduces the school uh, assembly play or musical number of Bart's class and Bart gets yanked from the stage because he's being bad. And then Principal Skinner introduces him and they do this dance that's so mind-numbingly. Any parent that's ever been at a that at like an assembly, um, what do they call them? Re, 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 recital, recital kind of thing. Well, no, just how play terrible or, yeah. they can be. But, you know... They're kids. So, yes, if you're not expecting something on a par of, like, Shirley Temple skill and, uh, you know, virtuosity. But uh, then, of course, Bart goes into, I'm going to change this. And then he adds his music and the music video starts. But it, that, that intro, though, it's just, like, terrible. Yes. And so scripts are bad. We know that. And that's usually because someone wrote it without any idea what the hell they were talking about. So like a call and say, arguably this is, and that, well, that person had no idea and said, arguably, this is the way I imagine this scenario happening. And you hear it and it sounds false immediately. You don't even need to be a, a spelunker to searching for the lost treasure of Kilimanjaro to know, you know what, if that scenario were to have happened in the world, it would not have happened like that. Yet Raiders of the Lost Ark, I would say, even though this is fantasy, even though this is fiction, somehow it felt like it could have happened. It The notes rang off soundly. The dialogue had feeling to it. And that's because Harrison Ford is being quoted. I don't remember him saying this, but he says, acting is easy. You just pretend. And But he did it in a way that was like, if I were me and I were in this scenario, I'm going to speak from the heart and just talk like this and I don't know and just be like you know like he's like I don't know I'm I'm just making them this up as I go along you can tell that half of those lines were yes yeah, some were written but Harrison Ford and a good crew of the top professionals will know how to improvise in a moment to grab something really cool that was not planned like the sword fight uh, in the Cairo market that he just pulls out his gun mm. and shoots the guy. That, that was wasn't not planned. in the script. No, yeah. Harrison Ford apparently had uh, uh, food poisoning as well as uh, many crew members did, and he begged to to for this scene to be done as soon as possible. And Spielberg, being as brilliant as he is, says, "Well, well there's an easy way. <laughs> we'll just have it so that he does his sword intro thing, the crowd parts, and then you see what a terrible thing it's going to be." And they had a like a two days blocked out for this huge sword fight. The guy had been. The sword master had been learning this sword for something like six weeks. And then they said, okay, you're going to lift your gun, you'll fire, and he'll fall down. That's great. And, like, that sucks for that guy who had a big role. But (laughs) ultimately, it's way better for his character because he would have been forgotten even though he would have been a three-minute fight. Yeah. It turned out to be one of the most brilliant, funny, insightful little gags in the movie. Like... It was blown for me before I saw it because my cousin Tim saw it and said, oh, it was so funny. He pulls up this gun and shoots him right oh. dead right there. And I was like, oh. but it didn't ruin the moment. It just took the surprise away. Right. But it was still unbelievable. So there you go. All right. Well, here we go. Outdoor episode. First one. First, Actually, this is the first outdoor episode that I've done. Has it been? Sorry. Has it been? <laughs> I yes, I did one in a like porch, a screened-in porch. I've done some the in an apartment. Outdoor episode from but, me, from the mind of Clark. Forget the last name. In a world deep inside the mind of Clark, comes to you the first episode ever outdoors. Anyway, 
So congratulations. First out, another, uh, another, another check mark there on the uh, list of firsts. Uh, thank you for having me today. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I always look for a good spot to end, and I thought we had it there, but yeah. I can always end it in the editing stage. Goodbye, but. everybody. <laughs> <laughs>